13, and right now we have 12. So we don't have an official forum. Okay. However, uh, we can have what is called a uh, meeting of the whole. So um, I will leave the floor open and see if anyone wants to uh, make a motion. Yeah, I, I would move that, um, first of all, that since we have some new members of the board, that um, everyone on the board introduce themselves briefly and then um, that we um, have a motion about who should chair this meeting since uh, it's time for a new term of officers so uh, we could have a, a you know a pro tem chair and a pro tem secretary and then just you know have an open discussion on issues affecting the station okay good idea all right, let's start from um, over here. Hello, everyone. I'm Sharon Salam. I've been on the board a few years now, and I'm very pleased to come back on. Oh, well, actually, I'm very pleased to be present here to serve more and also more services to WBAI and the BAI community. Hi, William Hairwagon, uh, listener member, continuing into my fourth year. They extended the uh, people that were elected in 2012 for one more year, and then there'll be elections this year again. Hi, I'm Roger Kilgower. I am a staff representative. I came on the board as of December 23rd when Janet. Uh, Oh. Coleman, thank you. Term limited out, and as the bylaws require that that person on the back be replaced with whoever was the next order up in the previous election. Here I am. Good evening, I'm Adam Charles. Uh, good evening. Evan Charles is a uh, well rooted in, in Pacifica. Uh, for some of you who have been listening to Pacifica uh, BAI from the uh, 70s. Um, his mother is uh, was Pepsi Charles. Uh, she had the program Nuances. Um, she is one who brought on such uh, luminaries as um, Ilambe, um, also Samori, and uh, Bernard White. Uh, my name is John Brinkley. I'm the uh, current chair. I just got reelected. And um, it's interesting in, in, in seeing that this board uh, becomes very functional because it's needed. Hi, I'm Bob Lederer. I'm a staff representative on the board, just uh, in this most recent round, reelected. Um, or uh, I have one year left on my term before I reach term limits. Thank you, Ralph Pointer here, first time on the board. Um, I note that Lynn and I met for the first time in 1963 as teachers right down the street at a school, 135, 135th Atlantic Avenue. It's Henry Highland Garnett School, and we've been fighting the struggle for community control since then, and we were successful in putting the first black principal in wow, the system. Wow. I mean, I gotta tell it. And the first black stationary engineer, the first black contractors in the system were done right down the street, and uh, the, the movement for community control he moved on to IS-220, uh, 220, went down 201, and then over to Ocean Hill, Brownsville. And I say all of this to say, we were part of the struggle for education from day one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 
Uh, I'm Pauline Park. I'm honored to have been elected on this wonderful slate uh, led by Lynn Stewart, sitting to my left. Um, I uh, just to mention a few things about me, my organizational affiliations. I'm chair of Niagara, the New York Association for Gender Rights Advocacy, which is a transgender advocacy organization. Um, president of the board of directors of Queen's Pride House, which is the only LGBT community set. Oh, louder? Okay. I'm Pauline Park, and I'm honored to have been elected uh, with uh, such wonderful colleagues uh, from Lynn Stewart um, on down. I am chair of Niagara, the New York Association for Gender Rights Advocacy, which is a transgender advocacy uh, organization that led the campaign for the New York City Transgender Rights Law enacted in 2002. Uh, I'm president of the board of directors of Queens Pride House, which is the only LGBT community center in the borough of Queens, and I'm also coordinator of the Transgender Support Group, uh, which is meeting tomorrow. And I'm a co-founding member of New York City Queers Against Israeli Apartheid, which is the only LGBT-specific organization focused on challenging uh, Israeli occupation and apartheid. I'm the write-in candidate. <laughs> they can mess with us, but they can't beat us. Lynn Stewart, very happy to be here, anxious to go forward. See that the power of the ballot. All right. So I'm King Downing, uh, newly elected, and I'm a listener rep. Here, all John. Okay. Oh no. Okay. Um, okay, this is good enough for. Okay, so my name is John Riley, and I'm a producer of Out FM, so I'm a staff representative. And I was uh, elected three years ago, and it's been three very rough years. And it's uh, quite disappointing to see that the other side seems to have boycotted tonight's meeting. I think it's a uh, uh, big power play, and. Uh, completely against Pacifica processes. Okay, I can't talk any louder than this. I'm Serene Roberts, uh, still on the board. Um, thanks for coming out. This is going to be a big year for BAI. It really is make it or break it. I know everyone says that every year. But if you look at the numbers, it really is. And we need to ensure that we need to continue what we clearly are serious about because we're here tonight, which is making a path forward so we can preserve BAI. BAI has a lot of important work to do. Thanks. Okay, that was Serene Roberts. She's here with Nicole and Lauren Jitus. So, uh, Big hand for Serene for coming out. Okay, thank you everyone. Um, so I guess the next order of business is to elect the uh, chair pro temp. Uh, Bob is our unofficial uh, parliamentarian. Not, not really, but um, I move to continue our chair from the past two years, John Brinkley. Second. It's moved and second. Okay, any other nominations? Any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Uh, hearing none, I move that nominations are closed. And since there are no other uh, candidates, I guess I am the uh, chair pro temp for this meeting. Uh, do we need another office? Okay. Uh, the next office that we need to have for this meeting is a secretary. Any nominations? You can self-nominate. I nominate myself, William Carewagon, and Vajra Kilgower. So we have to make a choice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
All right, there's been. A, We're both taking notes. I think that's better. This is a first. I haven't heard a, 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 a dual nomination. Uh, is that legal? For this evening, uh, we'll, okay. Uh, and there, do you want to second it also, so you can have the the whole thing? Uh, are, are there? I'll second. Okay. It's been. I'm seconded by Ralph. It's been moved and second. Uh, we have two nominees. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations for secretary? Any other nominations for secretary? Nominations are closed. Uh, we can do this by uh, raise of hands. Okay. Uh, we have, everyone knows William and Raja. Okay, all those in favor of William being the secretary pro tem for this evening, raise your hand. One, uh, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All those in favor of Vaja being the chair, um, secretary for the, tonight's meeting, raise your hand. One, two, three. All right, uh, it looks like, um, William, you are the secretary. Thank you. All right, so now, uh, basically we have an open meeting. Uh, there is a lot going on, both here locally and nationally. Uh, our national representative is Serene, and she's a wealth of information. Unfortunately, um, her voice may not permit a lot, very little, very, very little information being uh, disseminated, although she has shared with a number of us, so uh, perhaps uh, someone else can share what's going on nationally. Um, is there anyone who would like to comment on anything going on locally? All right, well, um, I just wanted to get everyone up to speed if they're not already about what's happened in the last couple of weeks around the question of these elections and this year's local board um, because there's been some very distressing developments. Um, the first thing is that Pacifica's bylaws have a term limit in uh, built in which is you know for the the same reasons sometimes in a larger election system they're there to try to cycle people through and bring in new blood, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, what it says is after six years continual service, you are automatically off the local board and uh, it doesn't require a vote or a resignation, it's just automatic. And just as automatic is that the person who replaces that vacancy or fills that vacancy is the next runner up from the last election um, and again, that's an automatic and immediate process. So uh, it so happened that one of our board members, who was a staff representative, Janet Coleman, reached her six years of service on December 22, 2015, which meant that on that day, um, the next runner-up from the last election, which had been completed, which was the 2012 election, was automatically seated, and that person was Vajra Kilgower. Um, unfortunately, some of the people who aren't here tonight, some of the board members who have uh, apparently chosen not to participate tonight, are trying to make some sort of argument that, um, that in fact, the bylaws should not have been followed, but uh, that the board should have somehow waited three weeks until a new election result was in um, and basically defied the bylaws and said, you know, we're, we're not happy with following the procedure of the last election, the runner-up from the last election, we want to wait till a future election. And the bylaws just doesn't say that. It doesn't say if there's an election going on, you wait a few weeks and see what happens. You, you make the transition immediately. So that's very unfortunate that they are not following the bylaws. Uh, last week, the Pacifica National Board acted to um, cl clarify the situation because 
Um, one of the board members was sending out invitations to the meeting and nominating people for the national board, including the person who um, was the runner-up from the most recent election and claiming that she, rather than Vajra, was the person entitled to sit in that seat. Um, and so last night, a group of uh, other board members actually held a meeting to elect people to the Pacifica National Board and using the presence of this person, Catherine Davis, who um, is the National Board has affirmed as of last week she is not duly seated, Vajra is duly seated, you, but using her presence at that so-called meeting last night, um, they said, well, we have quorum, um, it's a proper meeting, and we can elect our representatives to the National Board. Um, again, complete defiance of the basic language, the clear language. This is not poorly written language, ambiguous language, this is clear language in the bylaws. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's uh, an effort to kind of uh, achieve uh, through through manipulation what they couldn't achieve through following the rules. So that's one thing people should be aware of, that this uh, is going on. And tomorrow night is the first seating of the Pacifica National Board for 2016. Uh, it's a, uh, a conference call. And, um, you know, we will see what happens with these uh, people who were elect so-called elected last night in a procedure that is blatantly in violation of the bylaws. Um, so that's one thing. The other... Can people tune in to that, um, the National Board, by doing what? Right. Um, thank you for, for bringing that up. Yeah, any National Board meeting that's um, an open meeting, if it doesn't fall into one of the allowable categories, such as a confidential personnel matter or a confidential legal matter, et cetera, or contractual matter, um, are broadcast or webcast to be more accurate, are webcast uh, over the website www.kpftx.org. So, um, I'm sorry? Yes, it's www.kpftx.org. Um, tomorrow night's meeting starts at 8.30 Eastern Time, and um, it'll be a good chance to get a sense of who the new board members are from around the country for this year. Um, so that's one issue. The other issue I just wanted to bring to people's attention is what happened at the last meeting of this body, the local station board on January 13th, which is that um, there were almost all of the members of the board were physically present in the lobby just around the corner here, and but um, more than half of them refused to come into the room that we're now sitting in, which is always the room that we've had meetings in. And um, they gave all sorts of excuses, but the bottom line is it was a legally scheduled meeting. Nobody questioned that it was a, you know, it was a meeting that had been properly noticed. It's the same second Wednesday of the month that we've been meeting on for several years now, and they just didn't come in the room. So we weren't able to have quorum. Um, but the one thing that the bylaws does say when you don't have a quorum meeting is that you can set the next meeting date. And that's how we voted by the majority of those present to, to meet tonight to continue our business. So it's just extremely disappointing that the other members of the board who essentially boycotted the last meeting have boycotted tonight as well, preventing us from moving forward in the really vital life and death business of the station at a time that we're in severe financial crisis. So I'll shut up for now and, you know, pass the mic. Um, yes. I had two questions. I don't know if I, I, if I need, to, need the mic. Uh, okay. Okay. This is for John and for anybody. So is this issue going to be on the agenda? at the uh, PNB meeting, the issues that were just raised about the seating and all of that. Is that on the agenda for that meeting? That's the first question. And then the second one is, uh, is their failure to show up on the 13th, is that a, an unexcused absence on their part? Well, I can answer the second question. Um, under the bylaws, um, you can only be excused or unexcused from a, a quorum meeting. 
um, it, it's recorded. There was actually a new amendment adopted last month that said when there's a non-quorum meeting, you take the roll and record who is present, but it's not counted as an, it, it, the, those who are not present are not counted as having been unexcused. Um, Serene, do you are you able to address the PNB? Yeah, I know it's hard. Let's hope that uh, does anyone know of any way of improving your voice quality because. Uh, Serene will have to be in uh, strong form tomorrow evening. Yes, I do, but I don't know if that's to get into now we're talking about. It. <laughs> we can do mic check now if that helps. Okay, so can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, I wrote to the PMB very early this morning explaining that there had been this bogus meeting with a bogus member and a bogus election and obviously sorry did you guys hear anything I wrote to the PMB this morning advising them that there had been this bogus meeting with a bogus seating and a bogus election and therefore the direct quote directors were bogus and could not legitimately be seated tomorrow I think, um, unfortunately, there are people who are inclined to high drama um, and unable to find it in other areas of their life. It has become BAI in Pacifica. So we undoubtedly will have some stuff in the air tomorrow when the PNB meets um, because they will show up on the call and um, It'll be a mess. It'll be a waste of time. It'll be, a, I, I, you know, we have work here to do locally. The PNB has more work than it can accomplish. PNB has work going back to two years ago that we've not been able to get to. There, there are things that need to be done, you know. So, I suspect there'll be a, a slight jam up tomorrow, and there will be, um, if they show up, there will be a motion to excuse them um, because they're not legitimate members. Um, to excuse the madness that led to them showing up. Um, there was another question that some, oh, when, when Bob was talking about, well, no, you answered that. When Bob was talking about the meeting, tonight's meeting, we should point out that because the elections ran late, we had expected they would end in December, but they were extended to January because we in New York didn't have quorum, and that's never been a problem. Um, but we didn't have quorum. The PNB on December 29th sent a letter, you know, passed a motion saying, guys, you're going to be working with a very tight timeline in January. Go ahead, have your regular January meetings. Because in New York and Houston, we always do second, second Wednesdays. Go ahead and have your January meeting. But notify all the candidates now, that was, you know, late December to be done in early January, that there's going to be a meeting sometime between the 21st and the 27th when they will be seated. That's this meeting. So that everyone knew, uh, the chair sent the letter out, that everyone knew from early January that in this week there was going to be a meeting so that we could get people to the national board for tomorrow night. So none of this is a surprise and the deliberate um, effort to not work with the rest of governance, you know, speaks for itself. Uh, it's my understanding that the that the meeting that was held last night was improperly noticed. Now, I understand that a number of board members did not receive notice of that meeting. Duly elected board members did not receive notice of the meeting. And I'm also wondering whether the public received noti notice of the meeting in a timely fashion, or whether we had once again a meeting that uh, jeopardizes our CPB funding. Does anybody know? whether that was properly noticed to the public. We know it wasn't properly noticed to board members. Uh, no, that, that, that's tonight's meeting. Um, Raja was talking about the meeting of the delegates assembly, just to clarify. Uh, although I am chair of the LSB, 
Paul, R. Paul Martin is the chair of the Delegates Assembly. And the Delegate Assembly is the body that elects members, uh, directors to the uh, Pacifica National Board. So they're, they're two separate. Usually, in fact, always, except for this last iteration, uh, the meetings uh, happen at the same time. We have our LSB meeting, and then we adjourn, and then we have the delegates assembly because every member of the uh, LSB board, or board are delegates to the um, general assembly. So it's the same group of folks, so it doesn't make sense to have separate meetings, different days, of people coming back and forth. So uh, last night was an aberration. Is this an open meeting or a yes. meeting of the whole? It's a meeting of the whole. Uh, the public is, is welcome to offer uh, comments. All right, we have William and then James. Okay, William Hairwagon. Um, the two words, delicate assembly, never appear in the bylaws. And New York is the only station that has such a body. All the other stations, to my knowledge, uh, just, you know, say, okay, now we're going to have uh, the delegate section of the meeting, and they do what delegates do, which is elect directors and vote on bylaw amendments. So, New York. I don't know, we started out wrong years ago, and this is what the price we're paying now. Uh, so, I just say that the whole delegate assembly idea is uh, not really valid. We should just have a, se a separate time for the delegates to vote at, at or right after an LSB meeting. All right, James, one yeah. Yeah, I want to thank you for the conversation we're having here. And I wanted to ask Bob what his analysis is, and tell me if I'm incorrect in my understanding of this, but I understand that at KPFK in LA, there were two members who termed out and rather than have them automatically go to the last election to fill those seats, they waited for the results of the most recent election, and in other words, they did it the opposite of the way we are theoretically doing it here at WBAI. So can you analyze that for me or you know, fill that out for me? Do you understand my question? Yeah. You know, I, I have not been able to look into all the details of that because every station has its own complexities about, you know, when when terms started, when they ended, what kind of records there are to verify exactly when people reach their six-year point. So, you know, I just haven't been able to sort through that. Yeah, I... I think it was actually at KPFA that that happened, and uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I think it was KPFA. And I think in the case of WBAI, we're the only one, only ones who actually had, still had a runners-up list to use. So them doing something different might be because they didn't have a runners-up list. Yes. And I think that horse has been beaten. Um, so I'm uh, moving on to the last issue. I didn't receive notification of any meeting other than this meeting. Um, that's true. And I also I have one a point of information. If the members are boycotting for the purpose of not allowing a quorum is what's our recourse? I'm a rookie here. I mean, if they could just stay away for the rest of the year, and we would just be at a standstill, paralyzed. So what's our recourse now if they're not going to come? Anyone like to answer that? 
It's hard for me to get into the position of not sharing, but okay. <laughs> well, other people who've been around can also address this. I think uh, Lynn's asked a really important question. My understanding of the bylaws is that there is no recourse. If they don't show up, they're not counted as unexcused, and therefore, um, you know, the bylaws, that, well, let me put it in context. The bylaw says that if you have three consecutive unexcused absences from board meetings, which unfortunately currently is defined as quorumed board meetings, then you are automatically off the board. Again, there's no vote. The board doesn't deliberate should we or shouldn't we remove the person. You're just no longer a board member. However, there is, to my knowledge, and please someone else can correct me, no sanction for not attending a, a, a meeting, a non-quorum meeting. Uh, okay, uh, we have Lisa and then John, and but first, John B. Uh, my sense is most things default back to the Pacifica National Board. So they, if this is ongoing, someone would have to raise it as an issue at the Pacifica National Board and they would have to come to some kind of ruling to uh, remedy the situation. Lisa? I just wanted to speak for a few minutes in layman's terms because I know this is being recorded and there might be some people, you know, who have decided to start following this because we know that we have a much more honest group of people on the board than we've had before who has increased their representation substantially. And what is really going on here, my comrades, I, w I served on these boards for like, what, six years of, well, I, won't, I won't say what it was. But anyway, um, I did serve on the board, I was on the national board, and my colleagues who now have increased their representation on the board is justice and unity. This other fact, I don't even like to refer to them as board members because it just sounds like, oh, the WBAI board members in some dissension. It's much more than that. These people are extremely unprincipled. They're unscrupulous. They are, they have often gone by list prog, independence, or whatever they are calling themselves now. But they have done a lot of damage. They were responsible for the last coup that happened. They're basically uh, running the network into the ground and what has happened tonight is that justice and unity now like I said they've increased their representation on the board so you have a 24 member board which is evenly split 12 representatives justice and unity 12 representatives from the other side if one it takes 13 people to get a quorum so all they got to do is just none of their no good people none of their people show up and then business can't happen and it seems like that's a strategy that they want to employ, but clearly understand what is going on here. Justice and unity has always been principled. They now have increased their representation on the board. The board is split. And the other side is just hell-bent on causing as much um, pain and costing Pacific as much money as they possibly can. And I w do agree. I think, John, you were saying, I think that this definitely needs to be brought to the Pacific National Board to find out what they can do about this. I would even say if this sh looks like it's going to be an ongoing thing and you have two more meetings that are like this, they're out. Or either change the, the issue with the quorum or something. Something has to be done about it. Uh, John Lawrence. So, um, Oh, little feedback here. Yes. Okay. Um, it seems like that there there are some things that are legal under the bylaws that we could do, and that would be appropriate if we wanted to. And one of them is uh, that we could uh, institute a recall against the board members if they consistently refuse to show up in order to deny the ability to have meetings. I mean, that might be a possibility. And with recall, um, that would be permanent removal. And it would be last for three years. So that's a possibility. That would be an extreme response if for some reason the board couldn't act on it. Um, but it's very clear that there's an attempt to set this whole situation up for a lawsuit. 
uh, at the last meeting that should have happened because there were 18 people there but didn't happen. Uh, there was a, uh, our Paul Martin, who's the treasurer of the organization, and he's on the ACE List Prague endorsed um, independence affiliated grouping that he um, was talking about a lawsuit. And I think that this lawsuit, uh, they want control of Pacifica. They can't, they couldn't win the election here at BAI, at least for the listeners. And, uh, you know, so anyway, it, it's a mess. I just have a simple question. Does that mean that if they don't show up for two more meetings, that's it for them? Is that what is that what it means? How many how many meetings do they have to stay away from before you can actually even think about doing something like a a recall or a lawsuit? The point, Bob, you're, you're trying to make is that if it's a non-quorum meeting, it don't count. That's the way the law is, right? So that means it has to be thirteen people, right? Something. Okay, so one of the bylaw amendments that we did last year, um, which I, I may not have voted against it, but I didn't think it had, there was much point to it because it had no whereas. You know, it was the amendment that said when you have a non-meeting, when you have no quorum at a meeting, you can, you should take attendance and set the next meeting date. But we could always set the next meeting date, I think according to Robert's rules. So all the bylaws said is make a note of the people who didn't show up. That is useful because you can see if there's a pattern, but it didn't go far enough. It didn't say, and if three such gatherings occur, quorum or not, this is what happens. So it was kind of a half-step bylaw that needs to be repaired. We're gonna be doing bylaw amendments uh, probably two rounds coming up. Um, if you have the time to go read the bylaws and you can find it on pacifica.org, please send me your um, ideas about specific fixes that are needed because Nia Beriaco, who's a former member of this body in the Pacifica National Board, calls them the by flaws because, <laughs> because they are so flawed. Um, so this one was, like I said, it was a fix without a, a, a real solution. Um, if you find anything, be be uh, free to uh, feel free to let me know. But um, obviously, we can we can raise it with the PNB to see if there's a pattern. Each LSB is a is a committee of the national board, so certainly the national board can send a message to the PNB or the the members of the PNB who are constituting. Um, uh, do I want to call it the problem? Um, who are preventing the body from getting any work done? Um, can certainly be addressed by the PNB. One would think that having run for the board to um, govern the station and to increase our ability to survive, that they would be serious enough to show up. Uh, one would also say that if you think you're right, then you show up for a fair fight and you put your arguments up against those whom you oppose and you see who's most persuasive and and you fight fair, as opposed to just not showing up. Okay, my, my question is this. At the meeting that was held, um, the meeting that was held uh, yesterday, and the meeting that's held today, at the end of these, both, at, at the end of this meeting, uh, there's going to be a date set for our upcoming meeting. Normally we meet on the second Wednesday of the month. Uh, if there's a date that's set for the meeting from yesterday that is different from this date, what does that mean? If, if you understand what I'm saying. Okay. Um, the only time the delegates need to meet is when there's a uh, vote on a, um, a resolution or to elect uh, members to the national board so they don't need to meet all the time um, but why I do have the mic because I did see other hands um, in, uh, instructing the secretary to make note of those who are present and those who are not 
Okay, great. Uh, Ralph, and then these. If I've been hearing correctly, I would think that by tomorrow, this time, <laughs> we would have information as to which direction to go. That is, having heard from the national board, and then we have something to work from. But now we're just guessing, if I understand uh, correctly. I guess also, I guess also again want to clarify because whatever they call themselves having yesterday, it was illegal. So it's not even recognized because the Pacific National Board recognizes Vajra Kilgour as being the, the, the representative, the, the staff representative on the board. That was so this is just they're just it was a rogue meeting, rogue gathering, whatever they want to call themselves, but it was nothing official from the um, Pacifica radio station. So right. they're rogue people. They, they did not have a legitimate court. They didn't have a meeting. It was not a, a legitimate meeting from what I understand. Uh, yes, there's a gentleman in the, in the back. Lisa, want to hand it to the gentleman behind you? I think he's in New Jersey, I right? Sir? Uh, no, not quite. Not yet. My, my my landlord is trying to push me out there, but we'll, we'll talk about that separately. I'm trying to push you all the way out the um, street. <laughs> Yes, um, I, yes, um, greetings to all and, you know, congratulations or condolences to the newly seated um, members. <laughs> uh, but uh, just in terms of the messaging, I just wanted to follow up with what Lisa had said, just to really try and make it plain. And if effectively, I mean, they, these are folks that talk about rogue PNB board members and so forth. They are affecting a... WBAI governance shutdown. And I think that is the kind of language that can resonate with the public and, and rally them. And as long as they want to persist on this, I, even if we could um, have some sort of, um, in emails or electronic messaging, we can have some sort of a ticker or a countdown as to how long they're basically holding the um, this um, LSB and, and effectively the network hostage. So I, that's just an idea I wanted to put on there. Could you identify yourself? I, I'm James Bryan. I apologize. Okay, thank you. Okay. Can you yeah. identify the members who didn't show up for those of us who don't know? Yeah. What are their names? Um, if, you, if you look on the back of the uh, agenda, there's extra copies. There's extra copies of the agenda. Oh, okay. ask them. So, so the members that did not show up today are Thomas Barton, Jim Digman, Thomas Barton, Jim Digman, Reggie Johnson, Ken Laufer, Frank Lefevre, Pat Logan, R. Paul Martin, E. Moser, Sean Rhodes, Alex Steinberg, Jeremy Taylor, and Bob Young. It's 12 and 12, so. All right, the cameraman can go. Mr. Friendly wants to speak and then uh, came down. I have devoted the last 50 years of my life to a study of thought. I've been studying thinking. But in particular, I do plan on putting this video in its entirety, your meeting, on YouTube. <clears throat> and I'm going to put yesterday's meeting as well, side by side. And I think you make a pretty good case. But I think I wanted to extend the idea to you're making some kind of a direct appeal to the public to help. since. As Lynn pointed out, you're, you're pretty short when it comes to uh, recourse. In this situation, the bylaws have their flaws. Um, so I'm inviting some kind of a public address, but I will offer this much. I am willing to help mediate. Uh, I have friends on both sides in that sense. I have witnessed meetings in which 
I thought you guys were the bad guys. I thought when, when you were doing the factional fight, I identified at times with the other side. I felt, ooh, they shouldn't be pushing in that direction. So I do urge us talking it through so that we open up fully what is the problem so we can identify it. Um, my hope still is that we can think our way through. I figured somebody has to do this, so I just went to uh, I just went to the bylaws just to see what was there, and um, I know I know folks here have been here for a long time and probably know a lot of this stuff, but there may be people out here who don't know. So in the Pacifica bylaws, which you can get on Pacifica.org, Article Four, which covers delegates, Section Nine, and uh, I'm assuming this is on there, so this is the most recent, mm -hmm. most recent one. A delegate can be removed and cease to be a delegate. I'm not going to read the whole thing. On the occurrence of any of the following, death or resignation, upon the occurrence of a disqualifying act, and the only example it gives is the appointment to an elected political office. So there may be something else there. Failure to attend the three meetings, as we said before. Um, um, D, upon the fair and reasonable determination by a two-thirds vote of all the directors of the foundation, uh, or a two-thirds vote of all the delegates for the same radio station as the delegate in question after a review of the facts, which wouldn't happen here because we wouldn't get a two-thirds majority. But Section E, upon a majority vote, which was mentioned over here, upon a majority vote of the class of members associated with the radio station who originally elected the delegate, voting by written ballot in an election to remove said delegate, provided that a quorum is established by written ballot and further provided that before any such election may be held, the secretary of the appropriate local station board shall first have received a petition signed by at least 2% of the appropriate class of members affiliated with that radio station seeking said delegates removal. And then it goes on and on from there. So that is the recall that I guess someone was talking about. I like to get the language, the, uh, language out. And then there's another uh, article that talks about lo local station boards and um, that more generally says that any time, and it's opening up slowly, but uh, any time that the board is not carrying through its duties. Now that sounds like as a body, but I don't know whether that could be applied to uh, individual members of the board that they're not carrying out um, their required duties. Well, I think that we have gotten two points that we have to follow. Serene's letter or Serene's communications with the board, our participating in the meeting tomorrow, and Joe Friendly's suggestion that uh, he do a publicity um, YouTube. YouTube event to show what to the public what's happening. And I, I think that's what we can do. We know we can do these things, and so that should be our action. Follow, follow up on Shereen's letter or communication with the Central Board as such, and then we can act following their action and with Joe Friendly's uh, publicity um, through YouTube um, might be a direction, or these are directions we can follow yeah. without asking anyone else. Yeah. I think what we want to guard against, and I say this once again as a rookie, is that we can dissipate all our energy, all our new gun gains, now dealing with this issue of not being able to raise a quorum. I mean, we it, it is an issue, but we don't want to dissipate and put all our energy into recalls if we don't have to. So, I mean, what we really need is to get, is it possible that one or two of those other people, those rogue people, could be enlisted to come to the meetings at least? I mean, I'm just saying, I can just see this devolving into a year of struggle to get a quorum. Uh, you haven't been listening to and all of the... Uh, I did listen. Well, then you know the answer. Um, so uh, let's not go that route. Let's go the routes that we know we can do without asking anyone else. 
and we've come up with those suggestions, and so we have no alternative but to follow those suggestions. All right, uh, we have a few more comments, but uh, uh, we're going to wrap this up by 8, 8.45. So we have Dacio, then Lisa. Uh, I'm sorry, Dacio, Green, Lisa, and then Bob. Uh, hi, this is Dacio Quintana. Uh, I think we should put pressure on these people. Uh, I think one of the things we can do is maybe have a petition. There's so many sites that promote petitioning. And this will be known across the web, and people are always in petitioning. I, I think this is a little pressure we can do it. I'm not so familiar how to start a petition, but <laughs> maybe somebody can help me. All right, uh, Serena. Okay, so I would like to um, request that Lynn and Ralph and Vajra and whoever else did not get a notice of last night's meeting send me an email tonight. I will include that in a note to the PNB with um, the draft minutes from Vajra. Who's the? Is it Vajra? William? Okay. <laughs> Lucky guy. With a note from William about what happened at tonight's meeting. The Aside from all the other problems with the gathering they had last night. It was not a delegates meeting. It used someone who had been specifically identified as not being a delegate to establish a so-called quorum. But in addition to that, I raised, before this happened, I raised publicly and repeatedly the fact that people had not been giving notices, that they knew John was on the air last night, that they knew because it's been calendared for two weeks that William would have, more than two weeks, three weeks, that William would have been on a, a national board call last night, a committee call, that I was on another committee call. But I don't, I don't think it would be useful, I don't think it would be a good use of our time to go have our own pretend delegates um, meeting now and do elections. I had reserved the time in the hope that common sense would, um, would visit um, and, and you know, that, that, that totally unnecessary trek to the Low East Side last night would not have been made and people would have shown up tonight and taken care of the business they, they ran to take care of. Well, that didn't happen. But, uh, you know, we don't need to go up with our own set of bogus names. Their bogus names are laughable enough, right? So we'll wait until next month. The board meets second Wednesday, which is, what, the, the mm, sixth? 10th, the 10th, Wednesday the 10th, um, and hopefully we'll have a delegates meeting then because I, I intend to urge that the PNB um, not recognize any of the quote results from the quote election last night. Um, so I don't even know who, if anyone, will be eligible to um, represent BAI on a national level for the next few weeks until we meet again. I guess that's what they wanted. Okay, Lisa and then. And then. I think in terms of the fight for this because there's always the, the, the legal way, the technical way, and then there's always the public. And I definitely do think that we have got to put public pressure on them because the, the situation of the station is dire. It costs money to have these local station boards. And you mean to tell me with the current state, you know, the financial conditions of the, the Pacifica National Board, you mean to tell me they're going to start acting like this now and wasting all this time and money? You have staff who have been laid off, staff who have lost their jobs, and now you have people like uh, Sean Rhodes and, and other people who are going to pull this? I really think that there needs to be a lot of pressure put on them individually because this, I can just see this costing money, and if they decide to go for the courts, which they probably will do, because some people just like to use their courts as their playground whenever they can't get any little thing they want want, you know, then they're going to do that. So that's just going to bleed even more resources. And I would definitely, in terms of the staff, I would let them know the, the stunt that they decided to pull. 
because this is just outrageous that you're gonna you're gonna do this when the station is in in such dire financial condition this is just unforgivable because it's cost a lot of money for these local station boards and they're just driving it into the ground okay can I ask um, is everyone here on the LSB public list who is not on the LSB public list what does that mean? What does that mean? Uh, there is, there are um, two LSB Yahoo group lists. One is just for the LSB members. That's when we have internal information to give back and forth for the board members. And then there is the LSB public list where announcements go out and uh, there's dialogue back and forth. Um, I manage that list, so anyone who wants to be on that list, uh, please sign this sheet with your name and your email, and I, uh, well, Ralph, you'll, you'll be put on that list. Uh, I'm talking about the, uh, the other folks, because what I would do is on the public list, I will ask those members of the board who did not come to tonight's meeting uh, if they intend to come to the next meeting, encouraging them, but asking them what their intentions are so that the, the public will know whether they intend to come or not. If they say they will and then they don't, then we, we uh, that, that is another uh, point of information. But I will at least inquire of them whether they intend to come to the next meeting. Um, I just wanted to briefly respond to what Joe Friendly said earlier, um, and I, you know, I respect your sincerity and your view of what's going on here. I, I would just point out, in terms of dialogue, um, the, this group that's here on, at the meeting tonight has consistently tried to have a dialogue with the other side for really since we first got on the, some of us first got on these boards in 2004, and they've persistently rebuffed that. Um, but even as recently as a couple of weeks ago, at the meeting that they refused to come into this room for, uh, several of us went out into the hallway and said, look, it's in your interest as well to come inside, sit down together and set a date for a meeting at which we'll elect our representatives to the Pacifica National Board because the way the bylaws are written, every grouping on a board is represented. It's not a, a shutout. It's not like one side gets the majority. The side that has the majority gets all four seats. So it would have made sense for them to be part of a meeting together. And they just mocked what was being said and refused to really get into it. So the problem is not a lack of a willingness on the part of the people here to engage in dialogue. We're always open to that for people that are sincerely willing to work to save the station and move it forward and keep it on mission. Um, the problem is people that just really have another have some other agendas. Um, and just the last thing I want to say on another subject before we leave tonight is um, I think we all need to be thinking seriously about what ideas we have to save the station financially. That is the dagger at the heart of WBAI right now, is that fund drive after fund drive for quite some time now have not reached their goals by a long shot. And that means sooner or later, you know, you can only do deficit spending so long, and then Pacifica as a national network just simply doesn't have the cash flow to front us anymore. And, you know, we don't even want to think about what could happen in that case. So, um, some of the people here you see on uh, tonight's meeting were part of a group that worked together with, with non-board members um, to forge a sustainability plan that was published about a year and a half ago. It's still on the station's website. And there were other people on the board who also had their own sustainability plans. We tried to work with them to make it a joint plan, and once again, they rebuffed that. But the point is, it's not about credit and who, whose idea was what. It's about figuring out practical methods that we can work on together to save the station. So I invite everyone from the public who's here tonight to join with us. And if you have ideas, and if you have time, 
and you're willing to work on a project, please see us because that's the work we have to roll up our sleeves and get going on. Okay, we'll have one, two, and then that's it. We're going to uh, shut it down for this evening. I appreciate everyone coming out uh, in the weather. Um, I think that this, this evening was uh, informative. And I think we all know what we need to do. You know, we need to stay strong, play close attention, and keep on moving forward. Uh, one and two. Okay. We have a school teacher here who needs to leave and uh, correct some papers. Yes. All right, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. All right. Uh, who's our, uh, uh, I'm not sure if I'm on the J JNU list, but most, if not all, of my information comes directly from Bob Lederer. So, uh, and also, um, am I right to hear that the um, fundraising is going to start again on Monday? Yes. For a change? Okay. Um, I don't think you ought to be begging them um, to come to the meeting. I think they're obstructionists. They don't really care about the station. If they cared, they would be here. They're only after their own self-interest, whatever that may be. I don't think we ought to be begging anyone um, to come to a meeting. And I think it should go public, what they're doing, because it'll, it'll um, the pe people who voted for them should know, uh, you know, what they voted for and, and, and clearly they should understand that they're not um, acting in the best interest of the station, they're acting in their own self-interest, whatever that uh, may be. And I think um, it's, I don't think it's necessarily a waste of time to try to get them off the board because if they're not going to help uh, the station progress, then it doesn't make any sense for them to be on the board. It's just, it's just plain. And I, I think that we should move in the direction of publicly embarrassing them and hoping that they don't come to the next meeting because that would mean three consecutive meetings. Is that right or wrong? No, no, no. But what is this three things, three strikes are out? That's what I don't, I didn't kind of quite understand. Then I guess you could explain it afterwards. Thank you. Okay, uh, a quorum is the, the right now. The board is there's 12 people here. It's 25 people on the board. 24, excuse me, 24 on the board. So a quorum would be 13. So it's only 12 here. So we needed one more person. Right, so no, this is a meeting of the whole. So the whole and you all, we all talk. Okay, last comment. Okay. Is there anyone else that has anything urgent that needs to be said this evening? <laughs> okay, we got James and just a friend. Okay, I'll, just for the record, I didn't want to feel I was disparaging New Jersey before. Absolutely nothing against New Jersey. But. Again, on the messaging. Oh my! Don't do it. Would we want to trade Christy for a promo? No. 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 Now let's wait for Christy. Okay. All right. Just on the messaging, I just wanted to say. I mean, there's a number of people um, on on the other side, if you will. A, a handful of them appear to have a conscience. I mean, I, I'm amazed by the amount of people that they could corral that could look at you in the eye and mouth something and, and their intentions are all elsewhere. But there are um, maybe two people on the new slate, on the new elected uh, members that appear to have a conscience that might be um, appealed to. And we certainly want to use public pressure. But also we need to just, um, just present to the public that, I mean, they came out, participated in this election, 
it gave this sort of mixed result. And effectively, the other side is saying that the, that the public voted for a government shutdown, for basically ineffective governance. And we need to put that, that um, to the public and see if they um, agree with that. Okay. Good night. Good night. Uh, my wish is for progress, <laughs> and uh, what I hear a, a, a little bit too much is polite name calling. Uh, the other side uh, doesn't care about the station. You care more about it. What I would hope for is that our full intelligence would be. What I'm hoping for is that we employ our full intelligence to really analyze what is really going on, what really are the issues that have kept you guys fighting, which people, which personalities, which leadership, which positions. BAI is lacking listeners. That's a reality. That tragedy I haven't heard um, successfully addressed. Uh, yesterday's meeting or today, that hasn't come up. How? How do we get more listeners? I mean, hello, um, there is a failure of our programming as a result of management issues and all that. Let's face, I saw, that's my appeal, is to really use our full brain power to really work out what are the issues between you and the other side, how they can be talked through, what compromises, you know, they, they made peace between the U.S. and Iran, but when it comes to factional fights, it looks too much like the, the Republicans denying climate change when it comes to just an unwe unwillingness to reason together. And in order to reason together, I'm, I'm appealing to you, help me understand what are the real things that have been pulling you guys apart? Yeah, I, I would second everything Joe just said. And just as a, as a point of parliamentary procedure, I guess, a minor point, but some people take it very seriously to heart. We should be aware that denying a quorum to the other side, whether you're in the minority or the majority, is a time-honored, well-practiced parliamentary procedure. I've been following these meetings for many years. It's been on this side as well as the other side. So again, to second what Joe is saying, I don't think it would be correct to say that people don't care about the station because they use such a time-honored and well-practiced parliamentary procedure. It's, it's in the book, Robert's Rules, and we all know that. Okay, okay. Um, we'll be closing then. All right, the last order of business that we have tonight is to um, identify a date for our next meeting. Well, I don't think the date is an issue because it, we're second Wednesday. That's still our pattern. Right. I thought I did earlier. Yeah, I wrote oh, Okay. But anyway, on the issue of time honored practices, rape is a time honored practice, slavery is a time honored practice. I've just never heard such a disgusting excuse for this kind of behavior. It's not. It's not, it's not acceptable when it's done on the people's dime and on the people's time. Um, okay, okay, I didn't do that when you were speaking. You don't get to do. Oh, I'm sorry. Now you get the last. You you used you a number of people a number. Of, okay, James, don't over talk me. Don't over talk me. And you're and you're not and you're not God and you, wait a second wait a second guys hello hello please don't allow him to disrupt what has been a fairly harmonious evening okay so someone who used their time to criticize other people's expressing themselves that not showing up showed a lack of caring. It was okay for you to use your time to criticize their statement, but not okay for me to say that that excuse, time honored, is rather weak. 
Okay, there are two different standards, and you've made your position very clear. Your campaign statement was the Indie Caucus people are the one who are doing the real work to save BAI. So I'm not surprised that that would be your position, but let's not pretend that you're, you should not be criticized when you feel free to criticize others. It's a little hypocritical, but that's the double standard. I never suggested that. You can explain No, 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 it's okay, folks. You heard him say that y'all were wrong to say what you said. But, you know, there are always two different standards, and it's only a problem when someone is annoying enough to point them out. Thank you. All right, the next meeting is our usual meeting date, which is the second Wednesday of the month. And that will be here at uh, 7 o'clock. So that's February the uh, 10th. February the 10th at uh, 7 p.m. Thank you. Now, this is the first point. I mean, because this is not officially a meeting, so we just like that. We, we can't have a meeting. But just something I feel needs to be corrected, only because we have a camera going on. And I've been with Justice and Unity a long time. You don't see not one of them in this room. We, as Justice and Unity, who may have had the majority on the board, suffered through those meetings. But so many of us showed up. I don't recall ever there being a meeting where not one of us showed up. What we uh, did was we worked to get all 12 of our members here. And that's what they should have done. I mean, that's just the way it is right now. So I just wanted to clarify that for the camera. I don't want no untrue statements going out. So thank you. Uh, let the healing process begin. <laughs> We're adjourned. We are adjourned.